Hannah Thomas is going to talk to us about the work she's been doing in East London with the Green Jobs Alliance. Hannah. Yes. Hi. Um, I'm looking forward to sort of hearing more from you uh, in a minute. And thank you so much for having me. And it's nice to meet you all. Um, my name's Hannah. I'm the co-director of a charity called the Otesha Project UK. And we're based in London and we work with young people and get them involved in issues of sustainability. Um, but a new programme that we're relatively new, about a year old, that we started finding is on green jobs. And part of our work is anchoring the East London Green Jobs Alliance. Um, and that alliance is made up of lots of different kinds of stakeholders, unions, other NGOs, the council, local colleges, job centres, um, local businesses. And we're working together to try and find opportunities um, for East London citizens to get into green employment and also um, train up um, and to use the Alliance as a platform to really um, get the message out there that we want some green jobs. Um, so I guess I want to tell you a bit about kind of the project, um, what, what we've experienced, um, why, we, why we set it up and the situation I think we're in going forward. Um, I think, you know, for me personally, I graduated in 2005. Um, I was really lucky. I kind of had no idea what I was doing, but I ended up sort of working for free for different things for about a year, like a lot of graduates, but eventually found someone who wanted to offer me a job. And now I have it, and you know, sort of really happy working in the sector that I'm in and doing what I do. But I think thinking about young people who are graduating now, it's just a totally different story. There are over a million people, um, young people unemployed now. Um, and also, like John said, there are other crises, you know, we're post Copenhagen, we're post an inconvenient truth, um, all of the issues around climate change and, and environmental degradation are much more urgent and high in people's minds. And I think there's another um, crisis as well as the economic and environmental crisis, which is the sort of crisis of social justice and inequality that we have. Um, not just in this country, but globally. And I'm really interested in how this issue of green jobs can try and tackle that as well. Um, and so I think, you know, we really were drawn to this issue because we want to match up the people that need the work with the work that needs to be done, essentially. Um, and so one of the uh, projects that we've been trying to do sort of as a practical demonstration project is to take young unemployed people from East London and train them up in sort of soft skills, so all the job readiness um, training that they need, literacy, numeracy, a lot of basic skills that they've been lacking in their education, as well as the hard skill stuff like insulation, um, basic construction skills, um, that kind of thing, and then placing them in uh, paid employment. Um, but it's definitely not been easy, and I think that is one of the main things that I want to share, like uh, last, just last week actually, we held an interview and information day for a lot of uh, 16 to 18 year olds from East London. Um, the requirements of uh, going on our training course, which we organised together with Tower Hamlets College, were that they were within the age bracket from East London and not in education, employment or training, so meets. Um, and we had paid work placements guaranteed for them after the training course with a social enterprise um, that go into people's homes and insulate them and sort of weatherproof them. Um, but on the day, we didn't get enough young people come. And it wasn't because they hadn't signed up to come on the day. We'd had real, a lot of interest. But on the day, two of the young people had been kicked out of their housing, their social housing, and so had to be trying to find um, other places to live. Um, one had been having sort of real uh, problems at home, suffering from domestic abuse, and like her key worker wasn't there to help her. Um, another one's youth worker was too ill to bring them and they couldn't afford to take the transport to come on the day. Um, and another one had been arrested that morning because of being involved in the riots. And I think like, this is real real reflection of like what we've been trying to do um, in trying to sort of 
we want to use the new green economy to kind of lift up all boats, basically, to help those people who are currently exploited and suffering in our current economic system, um, and to use this opportunity to um, sort of bring in those people and, and create a sort of more inclusive economy that's not just environmentally um, more healthy and wealthy, but also uh, benefits and workers. Um, but as I said, there are so many other barriers that need to be tackled at the same time. Um, and, uh, you know, complex problems like these need complex solutions. So, I would say that it's not just thinking about jobs and it's not just thinking about the environment, but it's thinking about our sort of welfare system, it's thinking about how our housing works, how youth services work, um, what we want out of work, um, and really questioning what the nature of work is going forward. Um, you know, I don't talk just about green jobs, I talk about green and decent jobs. So I don't talk, I don't really want to call something a green job unless it's sort of paid at a decent living wage, unless it's livable kind of working hours that you can support a family with that wage, and then it's not just a dead end job, that there are opportunities for progression and further training. Um, if you want it, you know, not everyone wants that, but if you want it, that those opportunities are there for you. Um, and so I suppose, yeah, what I'm trying to say is that I don't think that this issue is just about environmentalism, I think it's an environmental justice issue. And that's why I really like talking and thinking and working on this issue, because, um, you know, there are so many reasons to be angry, uh, <laughs> which you know, can be galvanising, but also this provides so many solutions and that we are talking about solutions and we're actually doing things and we're connecting the dots between the sort of issues. And I think Chris said, you know, a lot of people here, some have come more from the environmental sector that are here, some more from the kind of traditional left sector. And it's, I think this is a real opportunity to come together and think about where the cross-sections are and where they overlap and actually how we can have more power and, and take that power and, and do stuff with it. Um, and I think there's, you know, there's an opportunity to really point to stuff that is working. So, you know, so many people I've heard down in London about everything that is working, particularly here in Birmingham, um, that localised West Midlands, they've been doing so much stuff with the council, that there's been so much investment. Like Birmingham, I think, has been one of the most progressive councils in investing in kind of retrofitting um, homes and sort of installing solar and stuff, which is really exciting. Um, and down in London, there are projects going on, greening up sort of more traditional sectors that you wouldn't even think have anything to do with environmentalism. So there's a project called Skin that's greening up the health and beauty industry, for example, um, taking out the toxic chemicals that um, are used in that industry. And um, and sort of making the whole thing more accessible to people who don't necessarily want to go and work in construction. I think another issue that needs to be flagged up is the accessibility to women within this whole agenda um, and how we can make these jobs attractive to women. Um, and, you know, there is only six, I think, within the construction industry as a whole, only 6% of female workers. So, like, trying to think about how we tackle that too. Um, and in East London, I've had lots of people call me up, uh, like careers advisors from the job centres in Newham. They're getting young people now walking in, 16 year olds, fresh out of school, saying they want to work in renewable energy. How do they do it? How do they get a career? Uh, and the careers advisors have been calling me up saying, I don't even know what renewable energy is. Please come in and explain to us um, what these jobs are. And even though it's kind of like, oh no, it's also so great. You know, that a 16-year-old in Newham is asking how he can learn how to build a wind turbine. Um, so, you know, that's brilliant. And I think the last thing that I want to say is, I think, like, as campaigners, and I'm, I think a lot of people in this room are, we can feel that things are really kind of out of reach. And 